Hello once again our most valued student my name is Confident and welcome to the second video where we are rev revising Euclidean geometry and in this lesson I'm going to do three different questions this is the first question that I'm going to look at and I'm going to uh, uh, show you how you can go about answering this question and then also we're going to look at this question in this video as you can see this is preparation for June uh, this is how I'm going to show you how to go about answering this 10 marks and lastly I'm going to show you how to prove the tan code theorem so this is what this lesson is about and I will encourage you to stay tuned until the end of the video so that you can be able to prepare for your final exams remember these lessons are ready for its exam preparation more than anything so if you you are serious with your results that are coming either your June results or your November results you need to watch until the end because that is where you get strategies you get some ideas which are going to assist you in that exam so let's start with this question here it says in the next four questions ensure you give reasons for each statement you make okay that is common for you guys as you know for every statement you are making in Euclidean geometry you need to leave uh, give out some reason the first one says the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral remember the cyclic quad if we're talking of a cyclic quad for example uh, let me sketch one the opposite angles so we have a cyclic quad like this so there is our cyclic quad a b c d so now the opposite angles what are they talking about they are talking about that angle and that angle or they might be referring to angle d and angle b what do you know about them the opposite angles are what they are supplementary meaning they add up to 180 so if you add these angles when they are opposite they must give you what if you add them 180 so the opposite angles of a cyclic uh, quadrilateral are supplementary that's what they wanted you to write there all right so that's basic you need to know that 5.2 in the diagram below pr is the diameter of the circle prsu so pr is the diameter i think you can see this is the diameter all right and then they are saying with center q you can see that qu is drawn parallel to rs and meets sp at t so you've got RS being parallel to QU and there is a meeting at ST there. All right. And then the next one says, okay, that's the statement we are given there. And then they say, write down with reasons the size of angle S. So they want us to find this particular angle S. Now angle S, if you can look at it, if I have a, a cycle, right the center and i have a diameter and then i have an angle like that right so what is that angle remember that angle is a semicircle. i mean the angle is a right angle that's 90 degrees so this is exactly what i'm given here if you look at this that is my diameter and then you go to the uh, any point on the circumference with the which is up tended by the what by the diameter that angle is a right angle so what is says write down with reasons so we are going to say angle s is equal to 90 degrees and what is the reason this is the angle in a semi circle all right or you can say angle subtended by diameter angle subtended by diameter r p you see that so angle in a semicircle or angle subtended by diameter or you can say diameter subtends right angle diameter what we can even name it to say this is diameter r p subtend right angle you can say diameter r p subtends a right angle 
So different reasons, but at the end of the day, that is what you need to bring in to say that particular angle is simple at what? A right angle. All right. And then the next part, uh, which is what I'm interested in, is if the diameter uh, is 20 centimeters, so they are telling you that this particular diameter here is what? It is 20 centimeters. So that distance there is 20 centimeters. And then and SP is equal to 16 centimeters. And then they are also having that. All right. Okay, it's refusing me to draw there, but it's 16 centimeters there. And then it says calculate the length of TU, and uh, for TU, they want that small portion there. This is 6 marks, they want that small portion. Now, let me look at this. Uh, one thing that I want you to always uh, remember here, I, can, I know what is the length of QU. You see that? The length of QU is the same as the length of what? Or as the length of RQ, which is the this is the time I mean the radius. Look at this. This is the same thing. You can just you have different points here like this. Are you seeing that? All these points are equal. All these points are equal. What is this? This these are the radii, radii, or the radius of each point. So you can see that QU is simple a what? A radius you agree, you agree with me so if q u is simple a radius then it means i need to find my distance q t because i know what is the radius now q u is equal to remember the radius they told me the diameter is 20 so i know from here i mean its diameter is 20 which means from here to here is what like this if I can find these distances, it's 10 plus 10, you see? This is 10, this is 10, so that the diameter is 20. I think that. So which means QU is 10 centimeters. Are you with me? That is the radius. So, as I say, I need just to find here this distance QT. If I can find QT, I will subtract it from 10, then I will get that other distance TU. So, which means here, Q, U is equal to, what, I mean, T, U, not Q, U. T, U is equal to, you take Q, U, which is 10, minus what? Minus Q, T. See that? Which is equal to 10, minus what? Q, T. So, now the aim is what? Just find Q, T. Now, as I said, two ways you can find QT is uh, the first one is to use uh, the midpoint theorem here. Uh, if I were to use the midpoint theorem, now look at this. If I were to use the midpoint theorem, I take this distance here and say this is 10. And then I'll take the second distance there. I agree. You say that is another 10, right? So, and the whole distance. So, if I say to you RP um, over, let me say RP, the, the whole distance over uh, QP. Over QP. Right. Yes, let me use QP. Is equal to now RP, they told me RP is the diameter, remember? Is 20 over now Q, I mean RP over QP. QP is what? Okay, let me first do this. RP over QP is equal to, we can use this line here. Let's use this one. Let me use a different one. Let's take the whole of that and take the first part of that. Like this. What I just did, if I say RP, which is from R to P is the same as S P. See, R P over Q P is equal to what? S P over T P. Just check that. R P from R to P over Q to P is equal to S P over T 
RTP. But we know what is RP. RP is 20 over 10 is equal to what? SP, they also gave us SP. They said it's 16, remember? Over TP. Seeing that. And then here, when you simplify, you've got 2 over 1 is equal to 16 over TP. Then when you simplify, cross multiply there. And then 2 times TP, which is 2 TP, is equal to 16. Divide by 2, divide by 2. What do you have? You have TP is equal to 8. So which means with that information, you see TP is 8. So what do you have here? You've got 10. Here you get you got 8. And then here it means this is also 8. Do you see that now this line QT from the center, it bisects this line into two equal parts. Then automatically, when you do that, this means this is 90 degrees. Are you with me? So what you can do, you can then state and say, I don't want to, uh, let me undo actually. You can state and say here, to say T1, angle T1 is equal to what? Or let's say T2 is equal to 90 degrees. And then what are you going to say? You're going to say uh, uh, radius, radius Q u perpendicular to chord uh, to chord ps right radius tu perpendicular to chord ps or you can also say here uh, radius uh, q u bisects you see it bisects because it divided into two bisects S, P, and T, and then Q, U, perpendicular to S, P. So if the radius is bisecting, then Q, U is perpendicular to that. All right. And then when we've done that, then we've got this triangle here. Just to wrap it up, we have got this triangle. Look at this triangle here, like that. Remember this is a 90 degrees and you use what? Pythagoras theorem. You want that distance QT there. So with Pythagoras theorem, what are you going to say? You are going to say, um, remember it's 10 squared is equal to what? Because uh, what you are having is this triangle, guys. That's what I'm saying. You have a triangle like this. This is 90 degrees. And then you are saying this is 10. And then you are saying this is 8. And you're saying you want to find this distance QT. So which is 10 squared is equal to 8 squared plus QT squared. Then when you solve it, you have got 100, which is 10 squared minus 64, which is 8 squared is equal to QT squared. And then when you square root both sides, 100 minus 64 is 36 is equal to QT. Now what is QT? Qt is equal to 6. You see that? So Qt, therefore, Qt is equal to 6. Here, square root of 36, 6 is equal to Qt. Are you getting that? Then you come back here to Tu. Remember? We said what is Tu? Tu is equal to 10 minus Qt, which we got as 6. So 10 minus 6, which is equal to 4 centimeters. There is your Tu. Right, so that is uh, the way to uh, go about approaching that. Oh, what we can do is we can continue it from this question. Really. We say write down what is in angle S. Remember we said this angle is what is a right angle, right? And if we know that these lines are parallel, look, these lines are parallel. And you are looking at what? You are looking now at this line and you see it means automatically that line is what it's also 90 degrees and what are you using you are using the f angle f angle here look at this this is what i'm having here and this is what corresponding angles i think that those angles are equal so you can actually come here and say uh angle s is equal to 
angle T2 which is equal to 90 degrees and what will be the reason corresponding angles and then by saying corresponding angles you need now to state what they told us R S is parallel to Q U remember that information because that's what makes us say is corresponding and then when we have done that you also are going to say S T is equal to T P that one you can state it because you know now that this is 90 degrees once you say T2 is 90 degrees you can say S T is equal to T P and then what is the reason you are going to say Q U uh, bisects T I mean Q U bisects what S P right so that is that I mean uh, that is the part to say uh, here Q U bisects S P remember we say it uh, radius perpendicular to chord okay or oh, it's converse uh, Q U bisects S P and then it's the converse theorem that is the radius perpendicular to the chord then from there then you take to say if that bisects then you've got now this kind of a triangle and then you've got it now like this to say if it bisects you know this was 16 so this becomes 8 here and this becomes what 10 remember and then now you can find what we can find this distance q u like we did pythagoras theorem and then from there you know that q u is a what is a radius so we are going to then say since q u is a radius that will be back again to say it's 10 minus uh sorry this is not q u this is q t this one is t then you can say 10 minus q t and then it will give you that four centimeters after finding the simplification with the pythagoras theorem all right so that is that guys um i hope it does make sense let's move on to the next question here it says in the diagram below o is the center of the circle so there is our o and then k j k j is equal to j l and k is 50. all right so a few things here that you can also identify look at this the moment they say j is the midpoint so which means this and that similar to the previous question if this line n j is dividing this line which means bisecting it into two equal parts automatically it means that angles what is 90 degrees why because it's passing through the center see so that is the diameter perpendicular to chord are you with me so always uh, just pick that as something that is already given there uh, that and also just a few observations so this is a radius you see that is a radius this is a radius just a few things to pick up and with that it automatically means this is an isosceles triangle so automatically these angles you see these angles and these angles they are equal you know such small things is what you must always uh, be able to to pick up in so okay let's go to the question it says determine giving reasons the value of the following the first one is m o l m o l they want this angle i think this one is not difficult you look at that you look at that you look at that you look at that remember what is this one and then you've got that angle you remember the theorem angle at center is two times angle at the circumference so we are going to say here when you are solving this for m o l you are saying uh, m o l is equal to two times m k l and then what is it angle at center is equal to two times angle at circumference all right the next one which is equal to what two times 50 which is equal to 100 
so m o r l is 100 degrees okay that makes sense okay that is correct that is fine there and that was not difficult next one what are they saying they are saying find angle angle n angle n angle n is that one they want us to find that angle n now if you are to find that angle n look at what i said previously that this line and this line we agreed that they are perpendicular you know that is that part so what you can state you can say um j uh, that is j1 is equal to 90 degrees what are you gonna say you are going to say diameter let's say even yeah that's right to say diameter here line or we can say line nj perpendicular to k l right line nj perpendicular to k l and then you say converse of diameter bisects code so it's the converse of the diameter bisecting the code meaning these lines are what are perpendicular so you can put it oh you can just take that you can just take that oh we can put it like this we can say diameter you can say k l k j is equal to what j l okay let's start by doing this let me just do it like this first of all let's say k j is equal to what j l what is the reason that we're gonna give them we're gonna say it's given that is the first part and then second part we're going to say um j one is equal to j two which is equal to 90 degrees see and then we're going to say um n j perpendicular to what to chord chord k l i think that so we can take it into two steps there then from there we have got a triangle look at this triangle now there is a triangle which is n j k with 90 degrees so if this angle is 50 degrees and that angle is 90 you can use the angles in a triangle to say actually separating 50 and this symbol becomes 40 90 minus that but you can do it proper to say uh, j1 plus n plus uh, k is equal to 180 degrees what is this angles because sum of angles in a triangle I think that then you can then for say n is equal to 180 minus 90 minus 50 which is equal to what 40 degrees then you're done there so that was that part in uh, I know it's long and dry dry but it's still fine take your time you don't have to be in a position to quickly hurry there next one so this is 40 degrees there so what's the next one the next one says angle l1 l1 okay i think we also did this l1 remember about angle l1 look at this we have that we have that and then they're talking about this and you know this is an isosceles triangle right because you say that angle is equal to that angle and you know the isosceles triangle they are uh, base angles of an isosceles if i draw an isosceles triangle like this and I tell you that is equal to this it means this angle is equal to that angle so this is the same in this case our K M L so if this is 50 so you know what is going to happen so you are going to say again angle K you start by saying this it says O M is equal to O L all right and then what is it we call it we say it's red eye these are the radiuses and then it's also going to say um 
uh, angle M is equal to angle L. What is the reason? You can even say isosceles triangle or you can say um, it's what uh, equ a side, uh, uh, this is angles opposite equal sides. So it's angles op equal sides. It's angles opposite equal sides. Or say I saw this triangle to be understood. Then you can say therefore, therefore, you can now uh, say here angle M plus angle L plus angle K is equal to 180 degrees. What is it? Not K actually. Um, why did I say K here? It's O. This is O, not K, because I'm in the center. So this is also not 50. This is, I'm looking at this as, what I was taking now the bigger one. So I'm looking at this as what? We did calculate M-O-L. It was what? 100, remember? I think you picked that. I'm making an error there. All right. So which means here, when you have to find L, we call it L1. And then we call it M2. So here, angle M2 now, let me call it M2, is equal to L1. All right, so M2, this M2 is equal to what? L1. Now, then we can find our L1, which we are looking for, is equal to, remember, M1 is equal to L2. So we can actually say here, uh, 2 because these two are equal. We can say 2L1 is equal to 180 degrees minus K, which is minus 100. All right, and then from there, you divide by what? Divide by two, divide by two. So what is L1? L1 is equal to, which will be 80 over two, which is 40 degrees. So here, you get 40 degrees right and then lastly prove that m o l n is a cyclic quadrilateral two marks okay let let's remove that they want me to prove that m what do they say m o l n let's look at that m o l n say so prove that this is a cyclic quad Right. M M O L N and uh, let me do this again. It says prove that this is a cyclic quad. But look at this. We can prove uh, the cyclic quad easier here when we agree if this is gonna be the code of the cycle. Let's say this one because we have this. Let's make this the code of the cyclic quad. If this is the code of the cyclic quad, now um all right not that one let's make this one i think it'll be better let's make this the code of the cyclic quad now look at it that angle which we have already got and this angle see that this angle and that angle we know that so we can say angle n1 is equal to angle L1, which is equal to what? Angle N1, you know, we, fo we found angle N. We don't have to call it N1. It was actually angle N. Angle N, remember, we got this was 100, and then angle N was also 40 degrees, and then angle L was 40 degrees. So, remember, so we can then say here, angle N is equal to L1 is equal to 40 degrees. And then we can say therefore M O L N is a cyclic quad. What's the reason? You are going to say converse of chord subtends equal angles. See this code here. 
it is subtending that angle and that angle you know so when a chord subtends equal angles it's what it means that is a cyclic quad you know and that is the main thing that you have to put in there so chord this code mo it subtends equal angles of 40 degrees and then that means that is a cyclic quad let me leave it like that there so yes that is that part let's move on and wrap it up here with question seven in the diagram below always the center of your cycle pq pq is a tangent to the cycle at a so this is a tangent that pq it's a common theorem proof this is the tan code theorem proof is a tangent to the cycle at a a b okay the tangent to the cycle at a b and c are the points of the circumference of the cycle a b a c and b c are joined and then what are they saying here they are saying prove the theorem that states that a1 this is my a1 here is equal to angle b as i said it's the tan cot theorem common theorem so what do we do so whenever you are given that the first thing that you need to do is have a line like that it must pass through the center and then let's call that line x and then after that you construct another line that joins the p so here you're going to say remember these are construction lines so we have to make them as construction lines dotted lines so what we have so you're going to say here construct line or diameter it's better to say diameter because it's already clear construct diameter a x and join x b see you construct it and you join x b so now let's say if, if this is gonna be my a1 let's make this my a2 this will be b1 and b2 I now let's do this one thing is that you need to start by is to look at this line this line and that line you know that it is perpendicular why is diameter perpendicular to what to uh, its diameter perpendicular to tangent this is a tangent and then it's perpendicular to the diameter or to the radius so I'm going to say here a1 plus a2 is equal to 90 degrees and what is the reason diameter perpendicular to what diameter perpendicular to tan tangent that is the first part so we know a1 plus a2 is 90 degrees and then also look at this angle the angle in a semicircle look at that and look at that and look at that you know this angle is 90 degrees this is uh, the diameter subtends a right angle or angle in a semicircle right so you can then also say b1 plus b2 is equal to what is equal to 90 degrees and then what is it angle in a semicircle oh you say what diameter a x subtends a right angle all right so that is that you can put that then when you have done this you know that uh, p1 plus p2 is 90 a1 plus a2 is what is also 90 but now look at these two that's where now you conclude this is the conclusion here look at this if i have this as my code let me make it thicker if i have this as my code and then i have that here and that here see these two what does it mean if this is a cyclic quad those two angles are equal see that are you seeing that so it means what a2 is equal to b2 remember angles on the what same segment or code 
cx subtends equal angles are you are you seeing that so then i can come here and can okay, say here i don't want to change that uh my construction there i can then say uh, a2 that is that a2 right it's a2 is equal to what b2 and then what i'm gonna say angles on same segment or code cx code or semicycle we can i mean yeah it's a cord not a semicycle it's cord uh cx subtends equal angles or here you can say arc cx arc cx because there is the arc this arc cx this arc subtends equal angles all right and then you are done and then you say if a2 not a squared a2 is equal to b2 if a2 is equal to b2 so what does it mean remember therefore you can conclude a1 is equal to uh, a1 is equal to angle I was putting squared instead of one day, not squared. This is one, this is one. Therefore, A1, if A2 is equal to B2, uh, this was A1 plus B2. So these are the same. Look at this. Therefore, if these are equal, therefore it means A1 is equal to what? Is equal to B1. And that's what they wanted. Look at B1 and look at a1 so therefore you can you can say therefore a1 is equal to angle b because they called it angle b i called it angle a1 because i mean b1 because i was trying to do my constructions guys what what is happening here they are simple saying if this is equal to 90 and this is equal to 90 so you can say a1 plus a2 since it's equal to 90 is equal to b1 plus b2 which is equal to 90 see what i say so i can remove this 90 here and then i also said what i also said b2 a2 here a2 is equal to b2 remember angle in the same segment then that's where now you cancel out this you see that therefore we are left with a1 is equal to b1 and then b1 is equal to b so that is the proof that they want so guys that is that and as i said it is bringing these questions uh so that you can prepare for your final exams i hope this helps and if you are benefiting from these lessons what i will encourage you to do guys is to ensure that you are part of us you are part of this family is to subscribe ensure you are subscribed to this channel this channel is for the underdogs hey someone who says i'm battling with my mathematics you know i'm not looking for the brilliant guys i'm not looking for the high flyers i'm just focusing on someone who's battling with their maths who can say you know what i'm barely seeing what's happening i'm fearing for what is going to happen in june and if i don't pull up my socks things are not going to go the way i want but please please show me as slowly and as clearly as you can how to go about this that's why you see me taking time so that I, it doesn't have to be in a hurry i know what i mean because i was once in your in your in your in your, in your shoes i know how it is difficult it is to move at the pace of your teacher because you know with metric or with a grade 11 it's very high paced it's fast you know things are happening so fast because there is a lot to cover in a short space of time so they'll be moving so fast and you'll be asking yourself where am i missing it now remember if you miss it here grade 12 is going to be worse because this they just ask it in a question in grade 12. these theorems are done in grade 11 but they are examined in grade 12 so if you miss it here then it becomes a challenge hence i'm saying get time to go through these videos they're going to give you that foundation that background and if this is assisting you the best thing you have to do is to subscribe then you're not gonna have a challenge in missing out on these lessons all right
so we've come to the end of our lesson join me again there will be a third lesson i'm going to do on euclidean geometry if you are in for the third lesson give me a shout give me comments if you don't want i mean not really don't want but if you're not interested then if i don't see any comment then i'm not going to do the third lesson it means you guys are fine it means no one is benefiting maybe i don't know but i know people are benefiting but it means you have gotten enough to get you ready for the exam but if you're interested give me a shout send me on on the channel to say please do video number three then i will know somebody someone someone is watching this channel and they want more of this we've come to the end of our lesson thank you